I am Bruno Matos. In this video, we're going to show you a very cool project that Taylor and I have worked on as part of a microcontroller hardware and software class at Utah State University. So first, Taylor, could you explain briefly what is this project about? So for our project, we decided to use lasers to be able to transmit UART communication between the two uh, uh, microcontrollers and also between each of the computers. Thank you, Taylor. And for the purpose of this project, we are using a STM32L476 discovery board. This board comes with a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M4 processor. It is also embedded with a lot of features, like it has a microphone, a accelerometer, magnetometer, gyroscope, and a bunch more. For more details on this board, check the link in the comments below. But what we are most interested on this board, its capability to use universal asynchronous receiver and transmitter protocol, as known as UART. So let's take a look on how this UART protocol works. So in a UART communication, the data transmitted is organized into frames. Um, Usually a frame has a nice start bed that signals the receiver that the data will start to come. Then we have the data that we want to transmit. In this case, we have eight bits. And then have, we have a stop bed to signals that the frame is ended. Sometimes we can have nine bits, seven bits of data. And even sometimes we can add another like control bit. It's called paired bed in order to, to make some error checking. But well, let's stay with this simple, simple frame. So let's say, for example, that we want to send a simple character, in this case, capital A. Any character can be sent using eight bits. So that's good for this example. Uh, so the first thing that we, we want to see is the S code of this character, in this case, is 65 but we don't send hex code, we send binary, so we convert this to a binary number. Okay, so let's send this, let's see how it, it goes with, with the signal. So on the top we have our sequence of bits that we want to send. We usually send, of course, we send first the start bit with the signal. So in this case, you can see that the voltage on, on the transmission line drops so now the receiver knows that the data is coming then we send the least significant bit first so the end of the sequence and then we go to the beginning of the sequence and then we at the end of the the 8 bit we we send a stop bit Another important, another important concept here is the bound rate and the sample rate. So the receiver in the transmitter has independent clocks. So we don't have a transmission line that synchronizes both receiver and transmitter. So the receiver needs to know the bound rate that is coming in order to set its sample rate. Usually to use uh, over it, it to use over sampling uh, approach. Sometimes it uses eight times the bound rate to sample the signal that's coming. Uh, and sometimes it uses uh, even higher sample rate, like 16 times. Let's see now how we can use this UART communication using laser instead of simple wires. So the way the lasers work is essentially the exact same way that uh, a wired connection would work for UART. Uh, the only difference is that we're sending the data directly through the laser and the laser is shining directly onto these receivers and the receivers have a data pin that sends the data through back to the UARTs on the microcontroller. We are using two different UARTs on these microcontrollers to be able to send and receive data. 
UART1 receives data and UART4 transmits the data. Okay, now that you understand the basics behind UART communications and you know in general how we implement this laser communication using this microcontroller, let's see if it works. Uh, Taylor and I, we went to the lab and we won a very simple test. So I just sending some message to him, see if it receives uh, the message with any error and then he send he sends to me uh, another message and see if we, if we have a full duplex communication working perfectly with lasers. Okay, I'm gonna say hello to Taylor. Hello, Taylor. Oh, Bruno said hello to me. I'll say hello back. Oh my God. As you saw, it worked perfectly, at least with that bound rate, right? So what happened if we decide to go with a higher bound rate? In that example there in the lab, we were using 9600 bits per second, a pretty low bound rate. So let's take a look at what happened when we decide to push this laser communication further. So as you saw in our bound rate test, we reach a limit at approximately uh, 115,000 bits per second, which is a pretty high uh, bound rate. But when we try to double this bound rate going to 230,000 bits per second, as you saw, we receive a lot of garbage. Uh, so the question is, why is that happening? why when we increase the bound rate we cannot for at, at some level we cannot receive the data correctly anymore the explanation for that is in real life there's always a transition time between a high level to a low level which means that we cannot reproduce perfectly a square wave the square wave uh, will always seems to get smoother and smoother as we increase the bound rate. So at some point, the receiver cannot decode or cannot understand what is a one and what's a zero, cannot distinguish between these two bits. Okay, and that's all for this video. I hope you like it and you learned some new stuff as we did. Thanks so much for watching.